What's the most Cartman-esque thing that you've seen someone do? Best friend's dad died and I went over. His little brother was playing Xbox with one of his friends and we were watching them. Friend was getting his butt kicked and the brother bragged about it. Said some crap like ha, huh, you suck at this game. Friend replied well at least my dad's alive. Kid down the street comes over and plays a one player game on our N64 in front of me and my two brothers. Says we have to listen to him because he is the guest. My brother goes to his house. Same kid plays a one player's game the whole time because it is his house and he makes the rules. He also showed up at our house when nobody was home and played our N64 until my mom got home and told him to leave. When I was about 10 I had a fat friend who we called sweet on account of the fact he loved sweets and he was fat. One time I stayed over at his house. He made me a nice little bed on the floor. Big comfy duvet. Two pillows. It was real nice. When I woke up he was sat upright on the bed holding a little plastic box with a green switch on it. It had a couple of wires coming out of it which trailed to my comfy pillows. He loved model rockets and had a little packet of what he calmly told me was a plastic explosive that he used to launch them nestled neatly under my makeshift bed. He then reveled in my panic and hysteria as he calmly told me repeatedly how he was going to blow us both to pieces. Sweet was a bit of a dong thinking about it. My friend had thousands of Magic the Gathering cards. He used to buy up other people's collections when they'd sell them so he managed to amass quite a collection himself. He wanted more people to play with, so he taught me how and let me craft my own deck from his cards. The guy used to wipe the floor with me because I was new to the game, but after a few weeks of practice I got really good at it. We started playing with our other friends and I beat a couple of them. Eventually, I beat my friend in a pretty brutal game. He grabbed my usual deck as he was cleaning up and shuffled the cards back into his collection, then told me he was never playing with me again. That was 15 years ago and we never played again after that. He freaking took his ball and went home because he lost. There were 5 of us and we were all about 15 years old. Just dicking around in my friend's room when suddenly my Eric Cartman friend did the most dangerous thing you can do when stuck in a room with a bunch of teenage dudes. He took out his airsoft gun. At that point we knew we were all fricked. But I tried to bring sense into the situation and suggested we take a vote for who will get shot. We proceeded to cast our votes on little slivers of paper and put them in a hat. Eric Cartman read the votes seeing as he was the one with the loaded gun 2 votes Eric Cartman. 2 votes my friend Dan. 1 vote left. Eric Cartman reaches into the hat and opens the piece of paper. Looks at it. Looks up. Looks at it again. And shoves the paper into his mouth. Eats it and unloads on all of us. A really obnoxious upper class kid I knew in middle school started a ridiculous black market around the importing and sale of foreign, Mexican, Japanese, European, candy. He would buy entire cases with his mom's credit card and have them shipped to a friend's house, and built a network of at least 20 kids who sold his product at schools all over the city. He told me he made over $1000 in a semester, but he might have been exaggerating. When he found out about two other kids who had started doing the same thing, he got an older friend with a car to help him do drive-by paintball shootings of other kids' homes and their parents' cars. I think he was 12 at the time. Now he sells coke and has a pet chihuahua. I wanna hear more stories about this kid. One time in middle school I sat with this new kid who was a little portly and didn't have any friends. When I turned around to talk to my friends he pounced on my brownie and ate the whole freaking thing in one bite. I didn't sit with him again after that. I have a portly friend named Tony. Once at an anti-war demonstration, he keep driving past with a blowhorn and yelling. Go home you freaking hippies. Hippies. Everywhere. They wanna save the earth. But all they do is smoke pot and smell bad. Yelp. My brother-in-law is our family's Eric Cartman. His adult stepdaughter hid in their laundry room off the garage. And startled him when he came home. His revenge. He hid wireless speakers in the box springs of her bed. And played ghostly voices and even recorded her mom's voice to play on it. Spent the next year making her believe she was haunted and ghosts could talk to her. She stopped sleeping in her room and was about to see a professional when he told her. Because it went on so long. It was one of those situations where everyone knew what was going on. Except her. She was upset at first but got over it. He is known to be this type of person anyway. Always playing jokes. 
she had suspected something was up, but after having checked out her mattress herself, apparently he hid them very well and they were very small speakers, she couldn't find anything. Everyone else laughed at first but got over it, and to make it sound more believable he would use apps on his tablet to adjust the vocals, and make them sound more ghosty and spooky. He would have his wife say her daughter's name everyone involved is over 22 years old, and I think help me, daughter's name, then play while she was trying to sleep and she would startle awake and then go have to check on her mom. I used to hide a walkie talkie under my parents bed, and try to scare my dad by talking into the other one. I now realize that he only pretended to be scared, especially because it was a child's voice saying da and I'm a ghost. Packed emergency room. We read the Tridge note on a woman who has been waiting for severe abdominal pain and intractable vomiting. We approach the patient who is mid-bite from a nearly finished KFC bucket. When asked about this, she said what? I got her eat, before bitching at us for telling her she would be discharged. KFC has been mentioned in this thread at least 5 times. I'm starting to think there's a correlation between abhorrent behavior and eating fried chicken. I was at the dog park with my female Jack Russell Terrier. We were standing around and this golden retriever puppy bounded over, holding a stick in his mouth. He looked so happy and proud of his stick. My dog very calmly walked over to him, bit down on the stick, gently removed it from his mouth, placed it tenderly on the ground, pee on it, and walked away. This is my favorite one. Kid in my neighborhood was nasty and mean so nobody ever played with her. She stugs to just tag along and we give her a chance. One day she invited everyone to her house. Claimed she had a lot of toys and she did but she didn't let anyone play with them. She just talked about them. They were clearly used and worn but she just wanted to show off. Too late for this but you guys should have invited her to a game making sure it's an uneven set of people and just told her to sit and watch. I once lived with my younger brother who has since become more of an adult. On a weekly basis, he would have his destitute friends over to play video games and whatever. They were mostly underage, but this wasn't the problem. The problem was 2 liters. A multitude of grocery store brand soda was constantly being emptied. He could go out and spend $40 on $89 sodas. Imagine waking up one morning to the sight of a 300 pound 17 year old land whale napping on the floor in an ocean of Dr. Thunder and Mountain Lightning. My brother's defense, so? Please tell me the store was oldest. I've always thought it was hilarious to go in there and see the knockoff soda brands. My doctor. Pepper was doctor. Dazzle though. Two friends decide to split a large pizza for dinner. Pizza is cut into 8 triangular slices. Cartman friend eats his 4 slices as quickly as possible. When other friend reaches for the final slice of pizza, Cartman gets upset, saying it isn't fair for him to get the 7th slice. Cartman continues the tirade until other friend concedes the final slice. So Cartman convinced other friend that the pizza was cut into 7 slices in order to eat 5 slices instead of 4. Had a friend in college skip out on weeks worth of a class. He realized he needed to finish it so he shaved his head and printed a fake letter that said he had brain cancer. Sucker passed. Not quite the same but I had missed a majority of classes for linear algebra to the point where I showed up for a test and my friend told me he thought I dropped the class. Even with missing probably 60-70% of class meetings I still passed with a B. I had a friend that was basically the embodiment of Eric Cartman. He was a really funny guy, but he was selfish and always thought he was in the right. Whenever me and my best friend would hang out with him, he would talk about himself and his life, not caring much for either of us. Worst part was that he thought he was doing us a favor by chilling with us and thought that out of the three of us, he was the better friend. I took Cartman-esque to mean someone bigging themselves up and then when they're proven to be wrong a complete refusal to admit any wrongdoing. So a few years ago we went out for my friend's 18th birthday. It was a Monday and that was a student's night so there's a lot of people from my high school and college out. We had a good night and just as we were about to leave my friend says something like, Oh has been flirting with me all night, I'm going to say goodbye. Whatever we go and get a Donna kebab and wait around. About 15 minutes later boy comes back and claims he had been kissing the girl for all that time and he was going to be going out with her after college the next day. 
He then went super mad that we were leaving claiming we always dong blocked him and he was fed up hanging out with people who were always leaving before the night ended. Keep in mind we'd come out for his birthday when some of us had college the next day. It was already about 2am and we'd been drinking for hours. The next day we asked the girl about it and she was just like you. No that didn't happen. He said goodbye to me and then he left. When we asked him about it, he just completely denied it and said we'd made it up. Despite there being 5 other people who all were there while he was bragging he just claimed we were all drunk and misunderstood what he was saying and it was actually another hot girl that he was seeing. His mum picked him up that night. Apparently the girl had gotten ill that day and had to cancel. To this day I sort of marvel at how he just completely ignored anything bad he did. We were spitballing ideas for a party, and one guy chimed in with calling it the alcoholocaust. Barcode wrist stamps for people who came in. The Anne Frank room where you could chill and relax to soft music. If you made too much noise, you had to drink. Allied vs Axis beer drinking games. Each team only drinks beers from their respective member countries. We had a ton of extra books binders from something or other lying around. So we were going to be throwing books in the fire pit. There were a bunch of other ideas for games thematic decorations, each more tasteless than the last. We did not throw that party. We just got a couple pinnitas and filled them with jello shots instead. I would go to that party. I had some friends over and one of them had brought their buddy, someone I'd say was at most an acquaintance. We had been hanging out, doing nothing in particular when this dude leaves with my friend without a word. He comes back with a bucket of fried chicken and a 2 liter of soda. He then proceeds to to sit down and eat the whole bucket and drink the 2 liter without so much as even looking at us and even snaps at the guy who invited him when he asks for a piece. I was so infuriated by the rudeness and gluttony that I told him right there not to come back unless he learned how not to be a freaking gluttonous prick. I used to get called Cartman when I was in high school, since I was a pretty fat kid. My cat once tried to eat some of my chicken pot pie while it was cooling on the kitchen counter. Without even thinking, I shouted, no cat, that's my pot pee. I caught myself before the last word and I was horrified, haha. <laughs> no kitty that's mine. My roommate ate half a burger and said he wasn't hungry anymore so he decided to try and sell me the other half for $5. When I declined his generous offer he threw it out in the trash. When I was younger my parents would have to get me something for my brother's birthday or else I would get jealous and sad. I remember my mom did this for us too. It was just a little toy, not sure if it is the best way to do it, but I remember being happy to get a little thing for me on the day my sister got tons of stuff, and I'm sure she felt the same. Early 2000s, my mom was sick in bed. Me and my sister were in the living room. She yelled at me. She wanted me to tell dad something then bring her some pie. He was in the garage which is separate from the house. I opened the back door to go to the garage. I slammed my finger in the door. It was an old metal door. After I ran cold water on my finger, I ended up going back to the living room. All of a sudden mom screamed. I want my pie. BTCHS. I'm not sure how to pronounce BTCHS. A friend of mine intentionally, gently, placed a ladder on a mud wasp's nest knowing his insanely abusive father would be looking for it. The father ended up in the hospital. Father probably deserved it. I was friends with a kid who would keep sticks of butter in his freezer, and every day he would come home, microwave half a block of Velveeta, then proceed to shovel the cheese into his mouth with the butter, trying to finish both simultaneously. It was before South Park came out, but dang. In elementary school, my mom was a teacher so I threatened people with citations if they didn't do what I wanted. I also cried at any slight injury. So this goes back a few years. There were two neighbors. Let's call them N1 and NA. N1 moves into the neighborhood and does some cleaning up of the property. NA had a homeowners association mindset, but this wasn't a whole neighborhood. They didn't like the changes, and complained at N1. N1 would sneak over and steal their tomatoes and leave them in the NA facing window to taunt them. N1's reasoning was how could NA prove they were NA's tomatoes? NA built a wood fence in response. More, innocent, yard work was done at N1. 
The bickering continued with NA and N1 calling the cops on each other so much that I learned through friends the cops stopped taking any of their calls seriously. NA decided to raise their yard so the rain runoff would flood N1's yard. They didn't notice N1's yard wasn't flat with the wood fence. So the wood fence now spends the wet months soaking in standing water that is mostly on NA's side since they didn't want to raise their brand new, then, fence. NA started spreading rumors around town. The wife was a W having affairs because they saw a guy going into the house. It was a family friend checking on the house while the husband and wife were out of state on vacation. The daughter and her statutory raping boyfriend were having open sex in the front yard. No sex in the front yard. Not sure if they were having any in private, but he was like 23 and she was 16 or 17. Basically stuff that was lies, but had grains of truth. NA failed to realize N1 had a scanner and NA's phone was so old that it was within scanner frequencies. N1 loved gossip themselves, so they heard everything NA was saying about them. They heard NA's husband calling his mistress and arranging pickups. They heard NA's wife brag about how she used her connections with an SPCA-like group to get a woman's dog taken away from her because a woman who made that little didn't deserve a pretty dog. Especially if she is going to let it play in the mud. Mysterious cassette tapes about the affair started being left on their stoop. NA hired an investigator to sweep their home for bugs. Said investigator spotted the scanner's antenna on N1's home and outed N1. Things cooled for a bit after that. NA changed their phone. N1 delivered a makeup cake. N1 moved out. N1 held out for a certain type of house buyer. A known drug dealer. At least N1 sources said they were. One who likes working on their loud. Very loud. Motorcycles in the driveway. NA likes dogs. N2 was very fond of pit bulls. That yard work that made NA mad. Didn't matter. N2 just turned that yard into a muddy parking lot. That Halloween N1 went to the parties dressed as NA. Comma they heard NA's wife brag about how she used her connections with an SPCA like group to get a woman's dog taken away from her because a woman who made that little didn't deserve a pretty dog. Please tell me this wrong was righted. There were two girls in my class, 6th grade, who claimed they were cousins and I didn't believe it. One was skinny and gorgeous and one was fat. After doing some hardcore digging, I found out they were sisters. I decided to share this news with everyone and the skinny sister attempted to beat me up. She was ashamed that her sister was fat. 12th grade, my mythology teacher promised my group subway for achieving the highest points in the game we played. That sucker never got us our subway sandwiches. In revenge, I spread a rumor that he was fricking another English teacher. 9th grade, I got a bus driver fired. I lost my bus pass and the bus driver would only let you ride in the morning but, not in afternoon. Honestly, that doesn't make any sense. If you can take student to school, you can take them home. Especially since they are frequent bus rider who already paid their yearly fee. That afternoon, I got on the bus and she grabbed my arm. Told my mom and the bus driver got fired. When Princess Diana passed away, her funeral was broadcasted on every channel. I remember my, spoiled, younger brother sitting in front of the television. As Diana's coffin was being taken down the street, absolutely sobbing his eyes out. My mum saw, picked him up and put him on her lap trying to comfort him. That's when I heard him say, in between sobs, this stupid show is on every channel and I'm missing my cartoons. I remember watching that on TV when I was little. There was a shot of one of her sons placing a card that said mummy on her casket and I said haha he spelled mommy with a u. Well she is a mummy now. I felt bad about that dumb comment all these years. That kid lost his mom. After college, I left my hometown and moved in with my older sister in Charleston for about a year. Living with roommates can be bad but living with siblings is so much worse. Well. One day we get into an argument and she starts crying. Well, I started to lick her cheek and said, MMMMMM, the tears of unfathomable sadness. MMMMM, yummy, yummy, she couldn't help but laugh though. I had an awesome Goku figurine, probably one of my favorite things I've ever owned, and he nonchalantly ripped off its head. Self-confidence was sort of non-existent. We roll up to a stop sign. Eric Cartman friend sees a girl on her bike stopped next to us. He proceeds to roll down the window and yell be on bikes don't matter not sure what that means but it seemed rather Cartman-esque at the time. Roll. 
My sister is incredibly selfish. Today is Father's Day. My sister is taking him to the movies. I asked him what movie and he said I don't know. Something called Entourage? My sister was a huge fan of the TV show. I alerted my father that this is based on a television show and he said he's never seen it or heard of it before. My douche sister is making my father see the movie she wants to see on Father's Day. In case you're wondering why I'm not going, it's because I live about a 22 hour drive away from me. A 22 hour drive. That's not a drive. That's a plane ticket waiting to happen. A colleague didn't want to share his biscuits with me, so when he left his desk to make a brew I got my metal 3 sided scale rule and smashed up the bottom half of his pack of rich tea. You absolute w. If a colleague of mine did that I'd ask him outside for a chat. Not a someone but my fat butt cat when he stands in the kitchen and cries at me continuously while I'm opening his food. All I hear is I want my cheesy poofs. On the subway I saw two kids having an argument. It climaxed in one saying, well at least my parents aren't freaking Jews to which the other retorted, at least I have a father. Wait were their parents Jews or were they freaking Jews? Back in the third grade there was this girl that didn't like me and I didn't like her. I don't really remember what she did that set me off. But as revenge when I was yearbook signing time and everyone passed around their yearbooks I put a beard and devil horns on her picture in her yearbook. I had planned it to be on the last day of school so I wouldn't get in trouble. My mom still tells the story about getting a call from the teacher the day after summer vacation started. She thought she'd heard the last of me but nope. Went to Taco Bell with some friends during high school for some after school grub. We all head inside and place our orders. The food comes out and my friend opens up one of his tacos. There was barely any meat in it. It was basically just lettuce and cheese in a tortilla shell. Outraged by the lack of meat, my friend proclaimed, This isn't a taco, it's a salad on Jew bread. We were all like 9-10. He pushed our other friend over the upstairs balcony onto the couch below, 10-12 feet drop. I wasn't allowed to play with him anymore after that. My stepmom later told me that he ended up going to mental health facility for a while, that specialized in treating pediatric patients. College freshman. Upon hearing the fact that we all have had a cancerous cell in our bodies at one point in our lives during a biology class, he decided to ask for donations from all his distant relatives and semi. Friends to help him during his recovery from beating cancer. He then kept the cash and blew it in Vegas. College senior. Advanced religious course on the study of Christianity. She expected a seminary class promoting the King James version of the Bible as she was a hardcore religious fanatic. Got actual facts and world history that most religious people intentionally avoid or deny. Didn't exactly confirm her beliefs. So she filed formal complaints to the professor. Then the dean the school board of directors, the state university authority, and our entire state board of higher education, slowly got the point when each actually bothered to respond with formal letters basically saying she is an idiot and is what is wrong with American fanatics. I haven't thought about this for maybe 10 years. When I was in elementary school everyone started calling the fat kid in my grade the big ugly, which was a term John Madden would use to describe offensive linemen. He ran with it and started referring to himself in the third person. Like the big ugly doesn't take crap from anybody. One day, we had calzones for lunch. They were exactly what you'd expect school calzones to be like. And he ate two. And no one ever ate two. He then got sick from all the cheese and threw up into his tray at a big circular table. Giving everyone else a front row seat. He then dumped his tray. Went back in line. And got another calzone which he finished. I grew up in a really obnoxious upper class suburb I was one of a handful in my classes who wasn't effing loaded because daddy and mommy got their money handed to them. My mom was a lazy chain smoking bee and my mostly absent old man was a kind if albeit gun loving grifter. Well I got invited to this one kids whose I'm rich I make the rules and am better than you bs invited me to his party because he was throwing it on the school playground and I was there playing because crap with my mother. He started treating me like crap and I decided I had had it. I stole one of his presents without being seen. 
Opened it seeing it was a dragon sword smashed it and then hid it in his mom's minivan. After it was time for his presents they opened them and couldn't find it so they went looking for it. His mom finds it in the minivan and is asking and yelling what happened to it. I tell her I saw him around the minivan for several minutes, which he was and two other kids are like yeah. So she takes him behind the minivan and just beats the kids butt. Took everything I had to keep me face at a mischievous smirk. Eugenius little crap. Now this is Cartman level. Had a friend named John. Cartman. Who had recently learned the effects of hitting someone in the balls. So he did it all the time. My brother and I were staying overnight in lieu of a fishing trip with him and his dad. It was us three boys in the same bed and he rolled over and punched me in the sack. Again. He almost hit me squarely but he missed. A few minutes later. I did the same to him. But my shot connected with a pop. He screamed in pain and danced around until his mom came upstairs. He could barely catch his breath enough to tell her what I did, completely leaving out the fact that he did the exact same thing to me minutes before and failed. She sent me and my brother home and called my parents. No fishing trip and grounded to boot. Apparently, he had a sizable bruise on his coin purse. He never hit anyone in the balls after that. This is justice at its finest. The numerous antics of former Toronto Mayor Rob Ford, his narcissism, behavior and weight all factor into his Cartman-esque qualities. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.